Bucky Irvin, the halfback. First and ten, the Buccaneers deep in their own territory. Here's the Mitchell's Greg Nielsen, the new defensive coordinator. He advocates for it. Back to throw. Travis Cannon is out near the 13, maybe even the 14-yard line. Put him at the 13 and call it a game of six. Yeah, you don't like the early success that the Buccaneers are having on the ground. Double teams up front with a duo. Don't get over the top. A little bit of a missed tackle there from Ventura Miller. You have to be stout at the point of attack, and then your linebackers have to flow and field with physicality to stop them from having success on early down. He's got four carries, 22 yards. Carries of 6-5, five, 5 and 6. Jaguars have not gotten them on the ground, obviously. Second and very manageable at four yards, the distance. Back to throw, Trask turns and fires. He's got a man, and the catch is made. McMillan has got it. Breaks a tackle and dives to the 19-yard line for a first down for Tampa. Yeah, so he, I mean, look, not a bad play for McMillan. When we go back, Venture Miller being in the middle of this defense, your Mike linebacker has to be a guy that can be an effective tackle, a great communicator. He has to make those plays. It gives this defense an opportunity to get early down stops if he's able to be a stout player against the run. Miller coming back off a torn Achilles, and he looks fast. He has looked mm -hmm. like he didn't miss a beat. For an Achilles injury, which is not easy. Here's the toss to Bucky Irving, and he is bottled up as he crossed the 20. And he still manages to push that pile yeah. at 195 pounds and pick up four yards, though. Yeah, Brian, it's still too much success on the ground. What the Jaguars want to do, they want to stop the run on early downs. Four second and third long yardage situations. Right now, we see the toss sweep. Good job setting the edge by Abdullah. But then everyone else has to rally and tackle. They have to. You want to hold them to three yards or fewer on early downs. So now you can dictate the terms to the offense on second and third down. Three receivers on second down and six. Trask at his own 23-yard line. Sends a man in motion. And it's play action, and he's deep looking for a man, and he's got a wide-open runner, and he's across the 30. And Trey Palmer had all kinds of room to near the 33-yard line for a pickup of 10. Yeah, this is why you don't like the running game getting on track. Because when the running game gets on track, it creates opportunities on play action. Here we see a little bootleg slide concept. Comes out the back door. No one is there. But because you have to pay extra attention to the run, they're opening up things with the play action pass. First and 10 for Tampa Bay at their own 33 yard line. Here's Bucky Irving again, and this time he's planted for a loss. Now that is how you're supposed to stop teams on first down. Chad Moomer coming right up inside, feeling like you want to see a hammer feel. We'll see it right here when we look at the replay. Moomer's coming from second level spot. He's just going to see the action and go. There we got Bill Water at the point of attack, and he, look, he pulled a trigger on it, came downhill, fired his gun. So now you have a second and long yard situation. Much easier to call if you're Ryan Nelson. Ball at the 32 yard line, and Trask will go to the shotgun on second down. <laughs> Receivers spread across the formation. Trask takes the delivery, turns and fires. He's got a man underneath that the catch is made. But the receiver, Ryan Miller, is pulled down for a short gain of just four yards. Yeah, that's nothing. So once again, we're seeing how the philosophy of the defense wants to play out. Win on first down, make him throw a check down on second down. Now you're sitting with a third and six, third and seven situation. Uh, dealer's choice when it comes to Ryan Nielsen and what he wants to call in this situation. Third down for the Bucks ball at six yards, just across their 36-yard line. Just under four minutes to play here, first quarter, no score in preseason game number two. Trask looks at a stacked front. Intro Miller's up there in the gap. Now he's backing off. Pressure coming. Trask is hit, and he breaks away. He's got room to run, but sure. he will not pick up the first down. Caught at the 41-yard line. It's a gain of four and brings up fourth down in a couple. Yeah, really good job of execution. Uh, those last three plays. On the third down, you got a chance to see the pass rush create and collapse the pocket, force Cal tracks to get out of the pocket, but then you're able to rally and tackle. They're just a simple four-man rush, has some stunts going on up front. He tries to escape, but you see, defense reacts quickly, gets the stop, fourth down. Got and Terrell Miller right there with Terrell Edmonds in support. Parker Washington stands at the 10-yard line. And here's the punt from Camarda, and it drives deep into the summer night and bounces at the two-yard line and ended here in the first quarter. 
He is in the backfield with Mac Jones, takes the handoff, tries to sidestep a defender, loses his balance, does manage to go for five yards because he's that hard to bring down. Yeah, Brian, I'm, like he, he's running really well. And the thing about him is he gets to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see with his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. And what that does, it allows him to make jump cuts to the back door. So, again, there should have been nothing. He's able to get five yards because of the balance and body control that he displays. Brian Thomas, Jr., who had a big week on the practice field, goes in motion. And Jones is back to throw. Pressure coming. He's sacked at the 14-yard line. Yeah, this is the one thing, and it's good for the Jaguars to face this. But whenever you deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, you're going to deal with a lot of pressure, a lot of stuff up front. Five-man pressure, really straightforward. Just couldn't get it done. Just in a game that's man-on-man on. Uh, Tyler Shatley just lost in the line of scrimmage. Jose Ramirez credited with the sack. And it's third down at 15. Jaguars in a big hole here on their second possession. Devin Duvernay slides in motion. Mack surveys that front. Everyone's playing back in the secondary. Mack with time, steps, turns, and delivers a pass. Caught by Duvernay on his back. It'll be very near the first down marker. Should move the chains. It's a pickup of 15 yards on an absolute strike. Yeah, that's a dart. Now, this is some of the stuff that went into Mack Jones being a first-round pick. We got a little dig route by Devin Duvernay. Mac Jones throws him into that open window. He also throws it low and away from the defenders so Duvernay can make the catch without taking a big hit. Solid protection up front as well. First and ten for the Jaguars. And with play action, pressure coming. Mac has to scramble, finds a man. There is Tank, and Tank breaks a tackle and is caught from behind as he approaches the 39-yard line. They get a gain of seven yards. Yeah, this is one, th one of the things about Tank Bigsby. We've described him as being a physical downhill runner, but he has soft hands and he can catch. In today's game, your running back has to be a runner-receiver. Here on the screen pass, Tank Bigsby catches it, gets up the field. Another very positive and productive game for Tank, Tank Bigsby. Second down and two. Play clock and the game clock just about in sync. No score, first quarter. Mac Jones is headed to the sidelines. That is the end of the first quarter. All right, one quarter down. Three more to go here to start the second quarter. Parker Washington's in the slot. He's made his impact felt for the second straight game. Here's the handball. And a first down for Jacksonville with a powerful run and a gain of five right up the gut for Tank Bixby. Yeah, the two young players have really carried the offense. You think about who's touched the ball. It's been Parker Washington and Tank Bixby. And for Tank Bixby to be able to do it, uh, heavy workload early, this is a game where he is able to show the coaches, does he have the potential to be the RB1 if needed? So far, so good as he comes out of the backfield in motion. Empty set on first and 10. Mac Jones in his own 43-yard line. Marks out the signals, takes the waist high delivery, steps, turns, and throws to Bixby, who's got it, and makes a move across the 50 yard line. Cut from behind near the first down marker. He might be about a half a yard short on that nine yard pickup. Okay, so, so when we talk about it, we talk about young guys being able to use certain things. He's out there, empty formation, catches the hitch one on one, is not just a throwaway. The more that he can show that he can do, not only as a runner, but as a receiver, man, the greater the chances he's going to get up to the field in a prominent role. Second and less than a yard. Here's Dearness Johnson with a little sidestep move to get free back to the middle. And he crosses the 45 to the 44. It's a pickup of four and a first down. And our first and ten line this quarter is presented by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore Toyota.com today and take advantage of our full line of vehicles. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. Line of scrimmage, the 44-yard line. Here's the eighth play of the drive. Two tight ends in the ball game. Mac Jones is under center. 
play action. Deep drop, dumps it underneath. The Ernest just got it across the 40. Stays on the sidelines and has a game to near the 36-yard line. Uh, Brian, what I'm really excited about in watching this version of the Jaguars offense, it's a different look. We're seeing more runs, more ball control, a little more play action and compliments that really enhance what they're doing in the run game. This is a nice, controlled offense. It shows you can play fast and spread it out, or you can back, condense the sets and come down and play big boy football. Bigsby's back in the game, speaking of big boy football, on second in a yard. Parker Washington in motion, play action. Oh, there you go. And Mac Jones plants, turns and throws it underneath. The flag is down as Sean Bauman makes the first down catch at the 33-yard line. Naked Holding. Holding. Office number 62. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second out. Holding. The call of Javon Foster, the rookie offensive tackle from the University of Missouri. He's impressed, by the way, Bucky. Yeah, talking yeah. to guys this week. He's got good feet. Yeah, good feet. Big play in here. Hands get outside the framework of the body, grabs to prevent the defender from rolling back. So that's an obvious call. But what you like is, you like the initial movement, just has to clean up the technique. Back 4-4 four four on this drive. Facing second and 11. Takes the snap. Steps, turns, and throws. He's got Bixby. Bixby makes a move back to the inside. And it is a gain of about three. Put him down at the 43-yard line. Brings up third and long. So now this is where Mac Jones had to dig in his bag. The play action is going to be out of the mix. He's going to have to throw from a drop back standpoint, but he is a very precise and pinpoint drop back pass. Elijah Cooks, Devin DuVernay, and Brian Thomas Jr. across the formation. Mac surveys the corners, backing off, takes a drop, blitz is coming, now he's on the run. And he'll turn and sling it, he's got Look the receiver, and the catch is made by Brian Look Thomas Jr on the sideline inside the 29 yard line that's a pickup of 15 An office around it first and 10 at the 29 yard line of tampa bay tim jones slides in motion as mac takes a good long look at a stacked buccaneers front and here's the bigsby handoff and he makes a move to the outside ducks his shoulder and picks up four yards to the 25. So here's the thing about running backs and where the maturity comes in. A young Tank Bigsby probably would have tried to bounce that outside and outrun the defense. But watch this cut and then realize, let me get straight downhill, positive yards. It is the avoidance of negative plays that are the difference between good offenses and great offense. Our replays this quarter are presented by Everbank. Advantage you. Make the most of your money at Everbank. Here's second down at six. DeGuar at the tight end in motion. Now he's set. Hand off, and Bixby makes pretty even shot. first. And powers and pushes his way inside the 20-yard line. It'll set up third down and about a half a yard. Jaguars have converted two third downs on this drive. Third and 15, third and nine, so third and a yard seems very doable for Tank Bixby. Yeah, but this is the problem area from last year. This gives us an opportunity to evaluate how far have the Jags come when it comes to short yardage and goal line situations. Palmer the tight end slides to the top of the screen, and now DeGora follows. Bucks adjusting, and off, and he makes a move to the outside. Ducks Bixby has to fight for it, and we'll see if he gets it. Yeah, there's a free runner coming off the edge. Makes it really, really tight. It looks like they're going to make this a fourth down call. And there's an injured Buccaneer on the field. Hard line, and into the... But there's no reason not to go for it here, is there?